1993, Sega released a Blue Sky developed Jurassic Park for the Genesis. It told the tale of Dr. Alan Grant and his attempt to escape an island full of dinosaurs. You battled across jungles, sewers, and even volcanoes trying to get to the last helicopter and get the heck out of there. Though it didn't exactly follow the film closely, it did have some rather impressive animation and some moody visuals that captured the feeling of an isolated island full of giant monsters. It sold extremely well and was a huge hit for the company, forcing Sega to consider a sequel immediately to keep the momentum going. That sequel came a mere 14 months later in the form of Jurassic Park Rampage Edition, again handled by Blue Sky Software. But instead of a cookie cutter continuation using the exact same engine, Blue Sky gave us a number of major upgrades and changes that made this new entry a completely different feeling experience. In this episode, we will take a look at Rampage Edition, go over its many differences, and decide if it's something you need to play today. Hope you guys enjoy my review of Jurassic Park Rampage Edition for your Sega Genesis. Rampage Edition picks up the story as the first Jurassic Park ends. Dr. Grant's helicopter is leaving when he notices engine security forces flooding the island. As you try to warn the government, a fight breaks out with the pilot and down goes your ride. And just like that, once again you're stuck on a freaking island full of killer dinosaurs and weapon-toting bad guys. But thank goodness that this is not a sequel that is shackled to the original's play design. Dr. Grant now gets unlimited ammo for his dart gun and has access to much more efficient weaponry that can be switched on the fly. There's a shock rifle that is far more powerful than before, now capable of completely disintegrating your enemies. Gas grenades are back, there's a machine dart gun that fires much faster, a deadly flamethrower, a powerful rocket launcher, and a vicious shotgun, all offering varying levels of effectiveness against your foes. Ammo is procured in the field via crates, but be careful. Some of these will explode and damage you if you are too close. There are also dinosaur eggs, embryos, and DNA samples that you can find that add to your score, as well as life replenishment in the form of candy bars and first aid kits. Also unlike the first game, you are offered a bit of choice in how you go about this adventure. The first three areas are at your disposal in any order you want, and each of the five different stages offer gameplay quite a bit different from one another. The aviary is a run and gun battle to get to the bottom of the cage while keeping away from the flying dinosaurs who will return you to the nest at the very top. The savanna is a race to outrun the bad guys on the back of a gallimimus. Watch out for the helicopters and the trip wires. The cargo ship is a two part battle that rages both inside and outside the vessel. The ruins is a lost city set against a jungle backdrop. Here you'll need to explore and find the proper route while watching out for enemies, hidden weapon caches, and bottomless pits. The fifth and final area is a boat ride from hell as you make your way through raptors, soldiers, and all kinds of other dangers to the final confrontation with the mighty T-Rex. There have been numerous changes, improvements, and advances over the original game in regards to the mechanics. The slowdown that plagued the first is almost completely eliminated here. Fall damage is gone. Your movements are faster and more fluid. Checkpoints with arrows showing you the direction you need to go have been added. In many ways, this is heavily tweaked to resemble a traditional running gun more closely. There's still plenty of platforming, of course, and the stages still rely on a heavy vertical design. But the speed in which you move, the new weapons, and your newfound freedom from fall damage really changed the way you play this one from the first. It's sort of two sides of the same coin. They share much in common in terms of base design, but one is slower, more cautious, and intensely calculated, while the other feels more free, frenetic, and exciting. And if all that sounds interesting, you'll be happy to know that the Raptor Returns is a second playable character with its own adventure. The stage order is different as is the design, objectives, and final boss, offering essentially two games in one. And just like the changes with Dr. Grant, 
the Raptor sees a big increase in speed and energy in how it plays. It's a massive difference in feel, especially now that there is a double jump to get you around the stage so much more efficiently. Rampage Edition is essentially the first one on steroids and caffeine, a potent combination for those who felt the first was a tad too slow. Along with all those gameplay changes, Rampage Edition is also looking quite a bit different in the visual department. Things are a bit less gritty and less realistic looking, taking on a more hand-drawn look than the original game. It isn't worse or better in my opinion, it's just different. Along with this change, you'll notice animation that is far faster and smoother, especially when it comes to gameplay movement. There are also some major advancements in how the water effects look in this game. I don't think any game that entire generation has liquid animation look this smooth, an effect that Blue Sky would use again in its Vectorman series. There is also some nifty parallax and line scrolling used in a number of the stages, some cool sprite deformation effects, and there appears to be a lot more happening on the screen at any given time. As I mentioned, this comes without any of the slowdown that hampered the original, a major improvement that bleeds into just about every aspect of the design. Though this came on the same 16 megabits the first game shipped on, you see a pretty large improvement in animation across the player and enemies. Whether this is in the form of actual additional frames or the speed of the animation has just increased, it looks better and more importantly, it feels better. Some people complain that the less digitized look is a weakness, but I actually prefer that they did not keep the same exact art style. It gives Rampage Edition its own personality and feel, separate from the first, and I admire that Blue Sky put in the time to accomplish that. It's a solid looking game that paved the way for the excellent looking Vector Man. I was not a fan of the first game's gems-driven soundtrack. The screeching animal samples were terrible and the music in general just was a series of noises strung together, imitating music. I was not looking forward to hearing more of that mess in Rampage Edition. And unfortunately, much of this is just as disappointing as before. Those terrible animal samples are still in there and the water stage has a god-awful mix that drowns out most of the actual music. The Savannah stage has a brain-piercing ringing bell that never stops, and it's the longest level in the entire game. That really is a shame because the cargo ship stage has an excellent track that really shows off the composer's skill. If the rest of the music was at that same level, this would have been a winner, but overall I just found the majority of this stuff to be something I didn't want to listen to. It isn't atmospheric, it isn't appealing, and it just doesn't fit the Jurassic Park license. I didn't expect a John Williams inspired orchestral masterpiece on the synth based Genesis, but good lord most of this stuff is just ear gouging. What you hear in this falls more in line with Pitfall instead of Jurassic Park. Listen and see if you agree.
So, to sum up, we have a host of gameplay changes and improvements, solid visuals, and lousy sound. Where does that leave us with Rampage Edition overall? I'm happy to report that this is indeed very much worth your time. As an action platformer, I feel its appeal is a bit more robust now that its gameplay is faster, its platforming more forgiving, and its objectives clear and concise. It's got an entire arsenal of better weapons that you can use more often, and there are more healing items strewn about that encourages exploration. You can also kill these enemies instead of just knocking them out, a huge improvement over the original. Don't worry if you were a big fan of the first, however. As long as you understand the changes, this is still very similar at its core, and an easy transition to go from one to the other. You are still running around huge environments with no time limit, so explore until your heart's content. Find the best path, locate all the ammo and healing items. This gameplay is fast and lends itself well to this type of action platforming. There are a few areas of concern I need to mention. Though the stages are long and feature some strong variety in their look and makeup, there are only five of them. You could argue that there are more since they change around a bit with the Raptor's story, but they still have the same overall art and theme. That makes this one a bit on the short side as far as content, particularly when you get good enough to travel the stages at full speed. An average run can take as little as 30 minutes or so, with newcomers rarely needing more than a few hours of play to see the latter half of the game. You'll also notice that the password feature has been completely stripped from this version, likely in an effort to make things seem longer and or more difficult. In fact, most of these stages are rather easy if you look for food and keep the enemy suppressed behind constant weapon fire. The only stages I had trouble beating were the opening areas, the aviary and the savannah, and that was only because the birds kept returning me to the nest in one, and I got a bit overzealous with the throttle in the other. Those of you that preferred the original game's more adventure-like elements may also find the run-and-gun nature of this one a tad bit too arcadey. There were parts of the original Jurassic Park that felt like a cinematic platformer. The ability to pull yourself onto ledges, fall damage, and environmental dangers make things feel a bit more organic. Most of that is gone in favor of speed and keeping the action flowing at an even pace. It's not bad, it's just different, so try going in with an open mind. Despite my feelings here, Rampage Edition was not a well-received game. In fact, most of the magazines at the time, even the Sega-loving Euro publications, were rather rough on it. Many were heavily critical of just about all aspects of the game, but the one area that they had the most disdain for was the new run-and-gun approach. They mentioned that it was just a cheap cash-in and had no unique qualities worth your time. Mediocre was bandied about quite a few times. I'd say keep this in mind when considering a playthrough or picking it up for your collection. If you enjoyed the likes of Vector Man, this one is more similar to that than it is to the original Jurassic Park. But this also illustrates the fickleness of the Sega-loving crowd. Change is not something that is usually tolerated with the greatest ease and if you wanted exactly what you got in the original adventure, you aren't gonna get it here. Sega did go on to score the Lost World license in 1997, which was developed for them by Appaloosa Interactive. It was among the final stretch of games released for the Genesis and a technical marvel that just blew my socks off when I saw the special effects some years later. And that ended the Jurassic Park journey for the Genesis. One cinematic style adventure platformer, one run and gun platformer, and one overhead action game with impressive special stages all three potentially appealing to different swaths of gamers. I do feel confident that if you enjoyed Blue Sky's Vector Man series, you'll see the roots of those fine games here, and should enjoy it quite a bit. But perhaps what is most important here is that Sega provided two different Jurassic Park experiences in roughly a year's time. One a slow and dramatic adventure, the other a non-stop shooter. I don't think it matters that they were different, 
What matters is, Sega provided the variety to its fans that most companies just don't take the time to do. And I enjoyed my time with both of them. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.